This video is sponsored by Video Lancer. Professional tiling can separate an amateur from a professional. That is extremely important that you understand how tiling can affect your videos. If you look at an interview, commercial or even documentary, you will notice that the text appears at the bottom of the screen labeling the person speaking and showing the viewer some detail about the person or subject. It is not only about the text but it is also about how the text appears. Let me introduce you to the world of lower thirds. Why are they called lower thirds? It is actually a very literal meaning. If you have ever gone to a film school or read any basic film study books, you will know the term rule of thirds. Basically, our framing of shots is split up into three different sections called the thirds. The reason why this is called rule of third is because this is a simple rule or even a guideline that helps filmmakers frame their shots in order to make it look more cinematic or film-like. Lower thirds are placed on the lower third of the shot, hence it is called lower thirds. Now that you know what lower thirds are, let's jump into After Effects and create some professional looking lower third animation using some very simple steps and techniques. I am Nick Hill from Top Motions and without any further ado, let's get started. Are you familiar with these video transitions? Certainly you are. Nowadays, they are the most popular transitions on YouTube. Video Lancer Motion Designer, who developed them, have created more than 3,000 of such handy seamless transitions for After Effects as well as for Premiere Pro. Try them now. Free versions are available for all subscribers of Video Lancer channel. Links for downloading in the description. Alright, so here we are in After Effects. Let's start by creating a new composition. Let's call this LT for lower third. 1920 by 1080, 10 seconds looks good. Hit OK. So the first thing that we need to do is to create our shape. And it's pretty simple. Let's select the rectangular tool. I'm going to hold shift and create a square just like so. Also, I can turn on the title action saves just to be a bit more precise. Now, if I select the shape layer, you can see the anchor point is not into the center. Now, it's a very simple trick to bring it in center is that hold control and double click on the pan behind tool. So I'm going to double click and the anchor point is now into the center and then I can align it in the center if I want to very easily. So at the moment, I'm going to keep it somewhere around maybe here. All right, let's go into the rectangle tool, rectangle path one. Let's set the size to around 80 pixels. That looks good. Maybe it's a bit too big. So I'll go with 70. All right, that looks fine to me. I'll go around one second and 15 frames. Select the layer and hit P to bring down the position properties. Create a keyframe. Go back in time drag it holding shift somewhere around here so now we have a pretty simple animation as you can see right let's select the keyframes and hit f9 to ease those keyframes go into the graph editor and make sure to right click and select edit speed graph i'll select this point and drag the handle to the left so now we have a much nice and smooth animation very cool. Maybe I'll tweak this one a bit just like so. So now we have something like that. Also, I can turn on the motion blur. So hit F4. If you don't see the motion blur option, turn that on and turn this one on. So now we have a nice motion blur as you can see. Also, let's add a gradient ramp effect on this. So I'm using the effects console to pop up this small menu that I have. I'll mention the link down in the description cause many of you guys ask me what is this pop up thing that I have. It is the free After Effects script from Video Copilot that is the FX console. So I'm going to type in the gradient RAM. Now if you don't have the FX console, you can go into Windows and click on FX and uh, presets where it is. FX and preset and then it's going to launch the FX and preset panel and then there you can type in the gradient RAM and just double click to open that up. But FX console obviously saves you a hell lot of time. 
now i'll select the gradient ramp and bring these points down just like maybe so and then i can add any color that i want so i'm gonna keep it something like a nice purple color for this one i'll go with a nice blue color something like so and we have this really cool animation going on and then what i can do is add a very cool effect called echo on this one and make sure to put this effect on the top of the gradient ramp and now you don't see anything but now if i mess around with the properties first of all let's rename this to box underscore o1 so i'll set the echo time to around maybe 0.8 so point not 80 actually 0, 0, 008 then we can increase the number of echoes so i'll set this to around 30 and as you can see now we have a very cool looking echo but it gives kind of a square kind of look so i'll bring down the delay just a touch to maybe around 0.9 t looks good or maybe let, let's actually bring this down to 0 0.08 that is a bit too much so i'll go with 0.8 yep that looks much better as you can see and now we have this very cool looking kind of a gradient thing going on which looks very very cool actually maybe i'll increase the delay a bit so i'll keep it 0.85 yep that looks much better and there we have it. this really cool look also i can add some glow to this so i'll bring this up a bit increase the radius okay so as you can see this is looking pretty cool maybe i'll increase the threshold all the way up to 100 and play around a bit with the radius just like so so as you can see it looks really cool and there we have it let's select this and hit ctrl d to duplicate it so we have the box 2 i'll call this matte underscore o1 we don't need the glow on this one we don't need the echo on this one we don't need the gradient on this one also i'll turn off the motion blur just for the moment select this go at the very beginning hit s and bring down the scale properties and now what i'm going to do is i'm going to move the anchor point to the right so i'll select the pan behind tool make sure the snapping is on and just snap it to the right just like so and then i'll scale this up like so and then hit u so we can see the keyframes go right over here and i'll just drag this holding oh i'll just drag this like so so right now we you can see we have a pretty simple animation and now i can type in any text that i want so i'm gonna type in something like maybe let's call this motion designer make it nice and small so I'll just pull up this panel make it small increase the width a bit and now it's aligned into the center then change the track mat let's pull this up and change the track mat of our text now if you don't see the track mat option you can hit f4 on the keyboard change this to alpha mat oh change this to alpha mat and now we should have something like this really nice reveal now what i can do is let's actually duplicate this to create a second text right so I'll select the text tool. Let's type in a second text. I'll type in maybe my name. You can of course type in anything that you want. I'm gonna increase the size. Keep it something like maybe this big. Align it into the center. I'll pull this up a bit more, just like so. And then I can select the box, hit control, D to duplicate it so we have the box 2 hit U so we can see the keyframes go back right over here 
select both of these keyframes and drag the box down just like so and then hit s to bring down the scale properties unlink this and scale this up just like so unless and until it covers up the complete text hit u i'll move the position maybe a bit right over here so now we have something like that but i want this to come in from the opposite direction now if you want it you can keep it that this way also make sure to pull this up just like that so we have something like that so if you want it you can keep it this way but i'll reverse this up so i'll go right over here get rid of the position keyframes bring this right here create a keyframe go back pull this right over here so now we have a very simple animation let's select the keyframes hit f9 graph editor and the same exact thing that we did before and now we have something like this very nice and easy to create maybe i think i'm gonna increase the distance between the animation so i'll drag it right over here go right here and drag it right over here so now we have this very cool look now the same exact thing i'm going to do again select the box layer hit ctrl d call this mat underscore o2 and hit s to bring down the scale properties let's pull this bad boy up but before that i need to change the position of the anchor point so i'll select the pan behind tool and switch the anchor point to the left just like that and then i'll just select this and drag it like so oh this looks cool as well if you want to keep it you know this way you can keep it looks pretty cool but for now i'll just delete the glow get rid of this echo so i'll select the mat to put it onto the top on the top of the second text and change this to alpha mat so now we have this very nice reveal oh i think this got messed up so i'll select the motion design text and set this to alpha mat again so now we have something like this now let's select all the layers and hit u so you can see just the keyframes I'll go to around two seconds and what I'm going to do is select the actually I'll keep the time indicator right over here I'll select just the box layers hit U and then move the anchor point to the left and on this one I'll move it to the right and then select the box one box two hit S to bring down the scale properties create a keyframe go back in time i'll click on the diamond icon to create a keyframe make sure to unlink the properties of the scale and then set both of them to zero so we have this cool strips vanishing just like that you can select it and hit f9 to ease ease it and let's see what we have so far yep i think they are looking pretty nice nice and elegant maybe i'll increase the time duration a bit yep that looks much better now i want to animate the squares as well so what i can do is i'll select all the layers bring them 10 frame forward in time and then just increase the size or the layers layer width and then just increase the size of these layers by pulling them up i'll go right over here select both of these layers and hit ctrl shift h ctrl shift d to split those layers let's select those splitted layers and bring them at the bottom let's change the color so you can see it more properly what i'm doing here get rid of the keyframes from the scale and i'll select the select the layers and then hold control and click on the pan behind tool to, to bring the anchor point into the center create a keyframe go back 
and let's set this let's set this to zero and this one to zero as well so now we have a pretty simple scaling animation right over here we can select it and hit f9 to ease, ease it let's see what we have so yeah i think it look it looks pretty cool i can select the keyframes go into the graph editor and give them a nice little curve let's see what we have now i think it's a bit too fast so what i can do is i can move them to around 15 frames so let's see what we have right here make sure you don't have any animation on this so i'll get rid of the position so i'll move right at the beginning and get rid of the position keyframes and yeah i think it's looking very nice and trendy looking and one more cool thing that you can do is let's hit Control a close them all Control shift c to pre-compose them and call this LT for lower third, hit OK. I'll go to around maybe three seconds. Hold Alt and close bracket to crop that up. Hit Control D to duplicate it. Right click time and time reverse layer. So now we have our out animation as well. As you can see. And then I can select them again, hit Control Shift C to pre-compose them. Let's call this LT Vinyl. And then hit Control D to duplicate it. Let's call this Reflection for REF. Hit S to bring down the scale properties. And now what I can do is select, unlink the scale first of all. And then make this something like this big. Put this at the bottom just like so maybe even more small and then quickly add a fast blur effect to this all the way up to you know somewhere around there and you can bring down the opacity depending on your personal preference just like that and now we have a nice lower third ready to roll so again you know Control shift c to pre-compose them again call this maybe final really bad at renaming things scale that down place it just like that and now you have your nice lower third ready to roll maybe somewhere around there it's a good idea always to turn on the title action save to see where your lower third is so i think i'll place it somewhere around there you can add your videos add anything that you want to add a lower third to it's very simple looks very clean and yeah so that is a wrap for today guys i hope you enjoyed this tutorial and if you did then you know the drill make sure to subscribe comment like and follow me on instagram at dope.motions i will see you guys in the next video till then take care thank you so much for watching and don't forget to stay raw stay creative peace out